Hi everyone, Dorota Palitska International nail artist and educator here. And today we will be playing with my nails. I actually cannot wait to show you how to create this beautiful design, have a preview of it in here. We will get through step by step of how to achieve this look. And I hope you really enjoy this tutorial. So let's start. That's the set which we will create. It's really nice and blendy. And I have left one nail. Um, it's also a thumb because I don't do often thumb on the videos. So I thought that I'll show you something a little bit different. Uh, thumbs can be difficult, uh, actually. I start with pushing back my cuticles and then doing a little bit of the cuticle work. So one side. I remove everything what is on my nail plate and then do the other side. Clean the dust. Dehydrate my nail plate with the blue scrub before I start any filing, like um, otherwise you might bring any oils which uh, are on your nail. And then using 180 grit, I'm just scratching the surface of my natural nail. Like you want to remove the shine from the nail. I've got a tiny bit more product here, that's why I'm filing a little bit longer, that's it. And then the entire nail plate. Gentle scratches there. Clean underneath of the free edge. Brush away the dust particles. Check for any shiny places and I have found one more shiny place in here. Okay, that's me happy. <laughs> Dehydrate again. And then apply the nail form. So that's the sculpting form I'm using. This part goes behind. Now for my thumb, if I would place the form just like this, I wouldn't get a nice, um, nice shape of my nail. I need to cut out the entire first row. I've got really um, high nail folds. And without of doing so, like my form doesn't fit in properly. Pre-pinch in between my fingers and I always like to close. That doesn't matter if I do it for a client or not. It's just a kind of my way of uh, doing the things. Now checking how the form fit. Ideally, I could also trim it a little bit more on the sides. So just like a wee cut in here and another cut in there just to loosen this form so it's easier um, to pinch, squeeze. Okay, place then the line in the middle of the nail. And also the form, you wanted it to kind of come up a little bit higher than your natural nail. And then once you're happy with it, you can start closing this form. Very happy with it and the pinch is absolutely amazing as well. Like really, really happy. An extra nail prep to dehydrate the nail plate. Wait for it a couple seconds to dry. And then we are gonna use Universal Air Bond. So all these products gives me a really great attraction of my nails. And you can see it guys, they are lasting me ages. Perfect Rose is a gel which we are gonna use and I'm start opening it because my nail plate is still drying. That's it, Universal Air Bond. Again, wait a couple seconds for it to dry. And then we can start grabbing the product. So I always keep a tiny bit of the product on my nails, uh, on my um, gel brush. And now I'm just gonna clean it. UV cleanser was on it and then dry wipe to shape my brush. Okay, that's the product dry as well. Very small scoop of the product. Remove it from your brush because if you've got too much of the on the brush you cannot really nicely reach those sides and area around the cuticle. So like I'm always keeping the product to the minimum for those parts. And then I can pick up another scoop, this time much bigger, on the one side of my brush, release it from it and drag it to the letter I want to get my nail. So I will just check the length. We are just about the letter L. Today is a bit colder than normally in my studio. So I've got lots of time to play. 
doing side of the needle. So making sure my natural needle is covered. And then actually on the sides, the things works really nice. I can just follow the line which I've gotten here. And then do the other side. So pick up another scoop, also remove a tiny bit of the excess of the product from this side. And it works on the line two on this side. So I'm just following the line. Okay, I'm happy with this. And we can cure it. So I want to cure this uh, needle for uh, 30 seconds. My next step is to pinch that needle further. So once it's ready, I always tap it and I check it because you don't want to touch the needle which isn't cured yet. And then just place my pinching clamp. Before I release it, I check how my needle is behaving. Like if it would be under cure, the product may lift from your needle plate and you don't want that. So yes, I can see it as really nice and steady. I can put my pinching clamp in there, even lower a little bit because that's the place I want to pinch the most and then cure it the further 30 seconds. Now is the time for the apex. So I just remove my pinching clamp, check if I've got enough product. I do, I can even remove the form. I don't need it anymore. And then sculpt the apex. So again, I pick up a small amount of the product release it from the brush and I want to place it at everywhere. Like make sure it's everywhere. And then pick up a very large scoop of the product to build up my apex. Release it from the brush. and then build up my structure. Smooth it out a little bit. And then cure it. Okay, close all your products for the next step. You don't want to bring any dust in there and then UV cleanser to remove the inhibition layer. Now we need to shape it. And what you want to do it is to do a V shape on the side. So like a decent V shape. Other side V shape. Shorten the free edge. File the bulk which you've got around the cuticle area, so on the sides, just in there. On the top, you want to really blend this area well. And then on the other side. Now we want to even out the surface of the needle, so I'm just filing all over. And you can see it, it smooths out any kind of imperfections. You have to really keep going until you're happy with it. That's me almost there. I'm just checking the other view and I still have got a tiny bit more bulkage from the side. Just in there. I can shorten it a little bit.
and that's already start looking much better. We can swap to the buffer. So I'm just smoothing out the surface of the entire nail and like perfecting it. Okay, I would say I'm pretty happy. So remove the dust and now we need to tidy up the cuticles as well on this nail because I did just a minimal work. So I'm just taking off the raggy bits and pieces. And on my thumb, I've got always quite a decent amount, I would say. Okay, I can also see there is some white bits and pieces here. Uh, I wouldn't keep it on the nail. That's the um, border in between the natural nail and the product. You really want to blend that out further because that's where the lifting can start. You don't want to be able to see the places where the product starts. Clean it and then use the cuticle bead just to smooth out the area further. So now I'm swapping to this one and we've got those uh, packages of the different beads like uh, it comes like this and that's where this bead is coming from. And I'm just exfoliating my nail fold further. Just to smooth it out a little bit. This one is very gentle bit, like that's why I can work a bit longer with it. Okay, and now I've got this area nicely lifted to retrim it again and then our nail will be ready for the painting. I'm going for a full color so I'm doing a little bit more of a cuticle work just so we can paint it nice. You can see how much stuff is coming out of it. Okay, that's me happy with it, I think. Blue scrap to dehydrate the nail plate. Wait a couple seconds for it to dry and then we can paint. Remove all this dust. Actually, we can use that and then paint it. The color we are gonna use is 235 and it's called Some Pink. Really nice and pastel-y one. I'm not bothered about the middle yet. I'm mainly concentrating on the sides and the cuticle area. Now I'm just sorting out my middle. Okay, give it a cook. 
So 60 seconds. And then the second coat. I had some fluff there somewhere. That's it, I've got it here. There we are. So a second coat. and then cure it okay grab the next step so we are going to use the aurora pigment and the high shine on wipe top gel and i'm actually going to test it and see it if it will work on the other nails which i have painted yesterday so here i'm just applying the top coat and cook it 60 seconds. This is actually going to be um, a test as well because I done it the other nails as I say like yesterday and what I want to do it is I want to try if the Aurora pigment is going to take over it and they have been cured 60 seconds originally with the top coat and then I have done um, some other 60 seconds curing when we were sculpting this nail plus another 60 seconds curing and uh, I have done dishes like I have took a shower like I have done order packings as well so now let me see it it seems it might actually work it does work wow this is amazing okay so those nails have been done yesterday and I have done so much stuff and the Aurora pigment is still sticking to it. Wow. Not all chromes will do it, but this one is unbelievable. It does work. Wow. Okay, so it did save me a time. If it wouldn't work, uh, what I will have to do is I would rebuff those nails and just apply the top coat and then we could wrap it into the top coat. But no, you can see it. They are so nice and chromey. <laughs> Really chromey, wow. On the old top coat. Maybe because it wasn't scratched yet, like, I mean, I wouldn't scratch much of my nails like during like evening and the morning and early afternoon, because that's what time is it now. Um, and there is really no difference in between the fam which we done it just now and the previous ones. Okay, close this and let's move on into the next step because we want to secure all those decorations into those nails. So, what I have is my base gel. I'm grabbing a decent scoop of it. And then, on this nail, I'm just gonna go with some flour there and two other flowers. Middle one will go... I'm kind of trying to do similar ones what we did before uh, on the other hand. And the flowers are here. The large flower comes in here and the large flower comes in there. Then the small ones. I want the small ones always to kind of almost click into the large one. So I will show you that in a second. And those flowers last ages, like they really last ages. Even on my most difficult clients, which uh, could maybe lose a gem or so, this one will last. Obviously I'm making sure I've got enough base gel. and I'm moving them so they click into each other. OK. 
okay then this to click and click this way the transition in between them is much smaller and they are easier to manage this one is a single flower mm, going inside and it's a large flower One more and one more. Fantastic. Okay. Oh, and the farm. On the farm, we've got three in a corner. But uh, I need to freeze them first <laughs> because otherwise, um, the um, large flowers could kind of slide so I don't want that couple seconds and then I can do the thumb in a corner and the two smaller ones again introduce more base gel and let them almost click freeze it uh, when I'm freezing the product is about usually about 10 seconds now I've got some crystals in here we are going to use them as well and what I want to do it is place some almost random crystals so I can do one in here one in there and then one and one just an extra blink okay then we are gonna add two crystals in here one two ring finger I've got three one two three and the middle finger I've got them all over the top I actually really like this set because it's so blinny. The only trouble is it's actually difficult when I tried with the other hand. It was really difficult to take a nice picture of it. Um, they look much better in the real life than they do on the picture. So I hope after I finish this set um, I will manage to get a really good picture. get them in I am happy I am happy okay 10 seconds uh, freeze again and then we are gonna fill up the insides of the flowers like because until they are not filled uh, the things don't look nice and pretty so I'm just picking up again a drop of the base gel large and the small ones clean the excess of the base gel and then pick up the large gem press it down so it's really secure and then in this one I've got some smaller ones They've got those sharp points, so I'm trying to use, squeeze them in with this sharp point. Come on, 
Oh, I don't like this one. Let's pick another one. That's it. Freeze it 10 seconds and then repeat one, two, actually even two seconds will do, just so they don't run away. Because the thumb has different direction and then do it in here. I feel like this is a really nice and pretty set. I'm trying to don't touch the flowers which are um, inside so they don't get contaminated with the base gel. Another one. Oh, come on. And the last from the small ones. and then two large ones. And believe or not, those stones stay in when they apply with the base gel as well, like the entire time. Press it down. Okay, and another five seconds cook before we move on into the next step. So again, we want to, no, oh, come on. Again, we want to use the um, base gel and then some Swarovski Pixie. So on the thumbnail, I've got a random construction of the stones. Actually, they are all kind of random. So base gel, and I wanted it to go that way. So I'm just kind of painting what I want with the base gel. I'm gonna grab an extra crystal. and place one in here maybe, and one in there. And then sprinkle it with the pixie. So the pixie will only stick into the base gel. Tap it to remove the excess, and then what I'm doing, you could also use the dotting tool. I'm kind of pressing it down a little bit so the things don't stick out too much. And I don't want too much at the edge as well. Okay, happy with that. Flash cure it. Grab another base gel. And then on this one, again, just a wee something. Just like this. Press it down. Now here, just at the edge, I've got it stick out quite strongly. So what I'm gonna do it, like that's a larger crystal. I'm gonna grab my caviar beads and silver. And just blend it with those caviar beads. So basically what will happen is, because I've got caviar bead, which is much smaller than the actual uh, crushed crystal, I wouldn't catch, like the transition in between will be much smaller. And I don't like the things which are catchy, okay? 
I could also do that here as well. Just in there. So this crystal isn't catchy. Flash cure it for five seconds. And then middle finger, I want all this area to be filled in with the pixie. Base gel. Now here I'm gonna do a different trick because we are, it will be difficult to top coat it later on. What I'm doing, I'm straight away on the uncured base, I'm applying the top coat. up to the point where I've got the flower here. And then sprinkle with the pixie. Oh no! Okay, I need to grab another bottle. I'm trying to be careful when I'm doing so as well, so I don't lose them everywhere. Remove the one from the edges. I don't want it there because it kind of gives, I feel like it gives those bulky look. And then I'm gonna introduce a couple more. those larger ones. Happy with that, flash cure it, five seconds. And then very random construction again on the ring finger, coming up from the crystal side. Sprinkle. Okay, happy with this one. So 10 seconds cure. Okay, move my crystals so I don't lose them. <laughs> I really don't want to lose them. <laughs> and then the hash I know I've top gel. Now the things can be tricky. So what you want to do, let's start maybe with this one. What you want to do it is again, put the top coat on the side. Take a D-liner brush. D-liner, where are you? and play with this top coat. So you want to place the top coat in here, otherwise your chrome will come off. And in here. Because it's better to make after the chrome top coat and the crystal. No, because, uh, sorry, I need to hurry up. So um, no, you can't because the top coat kind of goes around the crystals and that secures them. Yeah, you can see it now. Yeah. I'm shaking with this top coat, making sure it goes around the crystal. And I'm top coating the edge of the pixie as well. Happy with that. Flash. <laughs> Never happy. <laughs> flash cure it for uh, 10 seconds. When you flash cure top coats or gel polishes 10 seconds as a minimum, like so it doesn't disturb the process too much. Then this one. So again, Patrick is laughing now because it yeah, wasn't. That was probably just five seconds. I know, I just do, I do it all the time for the video. I really do it all the time, guys. And they still last. <laughs> 
But no, no, don't do it. Uh, please, please don't do it. That's why I repeated it all the time because it's really important and uh, the curing time. I wouldn't try to attempt to do all the nails with the top coat when um, working around those large crystals because it will make the top run to the sides too much. Um, I'm actually applying a slightly bigger amount of the top coat than I would do normally. And I also check how the light reflects on it because we've got so many different things around it. Um, Sometimes when you're working, you can see the strokes of the brushes. You really don't want that. Uh, so that's why I'm double checking it. Now here, the side is uh, top coated. I'm just pulling my needle fold, capping those free edge. Also, see what's happened there is I, I have an empty space. So what I need to do it is ideally you should put the base gel in there. I'm just going to seal it with the top coat. Make sure this product run underneath of that. So I never want to have too much of those catchy places on my nails. That's why I'm a big fan of like gems, crystals, sugars and different things on my nails because they, they don't, yeah, I don't lose them and they don't bother me uh, because the way they are done, like I, I do really take my time when working with the top coat around those kind of detail. Okay, another one. So top coat in there. Pull my needle fold down. And then large brush. Shake it. Make sure the top is everywhere. Pull the snail fold down, cap the free edge, and then smooth out the things so they are nice and pretty. Okay, give them a final cook. Okay, I'm just gonna pull the things apart and then I can show you the finished results. They are still a little bit undercooked, so I cannot clean it my hand really. Um, but yeah, I hope I will be able to. Uh, make a really nice and beautiful thumbnail picture because they look so so amazing and so pretty like Absolutely unbelievable Nice and sparkly. Look at this guys. I hope you have really enjoyed this tutorial. You have learned a lot Excuse my skin like it looks quite dry and messy. I need to wash my hands for a nice picture uh, But yeah, I'm sending you a huge glittery hex and bye for now